Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another review from Married at First Sight, Season 11, Episode 2, I've Never Met My Fiance. Now, this whole entire episode was a really good episode. I really enjoyed watching it. Um, there was no awkward moments for me, <laughs> nothing that made me uncomfortable. Everything about this episode was right on point. So we'll start off with Karen and Miles. Now, in last week's episode, Karen had gotten a text message as she was getting ready in the hotel room with her bridesmaids and the makeup people and the hair people she gets a text message that gave her all the information for her husband and of course on this show the whole thing is you're not supposed to know who you're about to marry so because she got all this information she took it upon herself to go to his instagram and she looked at all of his instagram stories and she thought that this isn't going to work out. This guy was not her type. And so she was having serious second thoughts about uh, going through with the wedding. So the producer's talking to her, asking her, well, do you really want to do this? You know, what do you want to do? And thank God she decides to move forward with it, uh, to put her faith in the produ in the experts of the show. And um, she says something like, you know, this might be the guy that's meant for me. So she decides to go ahead with it. And I'm glad that she did. I really thought that she was going to actually, you know, walk off the show so so she didn't know him in real life she just from what she saw on instagram she didn't like and i thought well that's kind of you know taking that instagram stuff a little bit too seriously because you know social media you really can't judge a person completely on their social media not completely um so i'm glad that she decided to give him a chance so that was good. So their wedding was really beautiful. She looked beautiful. He looked really handsome. Um, I'm not a big fan of colored tuxedos, but I thought his deep plum tuxedo was really nice. Um, I mean, it was a nice ceremony. It was simple. It was nice. It was sweet. I liked how he had asked her when it came time for them to kiss. He asked her, can I kiss you? And she said yes. And then he kissed her on the cheek. And I thought that was very respectable. And I know that it probably made her family feel a little bit more comfortable. Because um, who wants to see some strange man, you know, shoving his tongue all down your daughter's throat? So that was really, really respectable. Um, I did like that a lot. And when they had their one-on-one -on -one time after the wedding there's a chance for them to kind of get to know each other ask each other questions and she brings up the whole text message and i liked how she brought it up she brought it up kind of like in a you know funny story kind of way and uh, she told him that i was given all of your information before i met you and i looked on your instagram so i kind of got to know you a little bit before i actually met you she confessed all of that which was nice and then he you know, he took it well. He was like, oh, man, you know, I'm jealous because I wish that, you know, the same thing would have happened to me. So you got to know me before you met me. And so that went on. That went, that kind of went over well. There was no, you know, awkwardness or anything strange about that. So it seemed like this is starting off really well. These, I don't remember her saying whether or not she was attracted to him. Um, he was definitely attracted to her. When they took their wedding photos... Uh, she did feel a little bit out of place, a little bit uncomfortable because you have to pose in these intimate, you have to have, do these intimate poses. So she did feel a little bit, you know, awkward about that, but I'm pretty sure that their pictures are going to turn out really fine. So that was a, a really, her mother had said that um, Karen is very modest. She doesn't like a lot of attention. Um, basically very shy, very reserved. And it definitely showed. And so her mom was saying, I'm really surprised that she's getting married in this way because she's normally the kind of person who doesn't take risks, doesn't take chances, you know, doesn't really go too far out of her comfort zone. So this is sort of, you know, amazing that she's doing something like this for the sake of finding love and happiness. So that was Karen and Miles. Then we have Brett and Olivia. Now... Brett has done a complete 360, or is it a 180? A complete 180. Last week, I did not like Brett, and I was literally uh, in fear of, uh, I was fear, I had a lot of fear for Olivia. So this week, Brett kind of won me over, I guess, because he was sober and we got to know the real Brett. Last week, he was a real complete jerk, and we're going to have to blame it on the alcohol. But this week, you know, he was sober, much nicer 
so I'm gonna go ahead and give him another another chance uh, bachelor party brat left a really bad taste in my mouth but this week okay you know I could I'm I kind of got used to him you know I kind of started you know liking him a little bit so Olivia gives him a gift um, before the wedding ceremony she has a gift sent over to him now I'm assuming that the people on the show it's up to them because I, I remember a time when it seemed like every couple gave each other a gift before the ceremony before they met but this time it was maybe the other couples did but they didn't show it maybe I missed it but it was only two couples that exchanged gifts so anyway, so um, Olivia sends him a gift and it's, I guess, um, a star registry and it's framed and she had a star named after them and the star was called Leap of Faith, which, you know, fits this to a T. So that was really sweet of her to do that. And he really liked it. He goes, you know what? This is really, really nerdy, but I like it. You know, this is right up my alley. And I was like, oh, thank God. So um, they have their ceremony and it was nice not much to say other than that it was a really nice ceremony they exchanged their vows um of course there's some awkwardness to it because they're, they're they've just met and they're in front of all these people and whatnot but then when they have their little one-on-one -on -one time after the ceremony they're sitting at this bench and they're talking coming to find out they have quite a bit in common which was good they have cats in common they have exercise in common um the question was asked you know would you rather go to the movies or stay at home and watch a movie and they both said that they prefer to stay at home and watch a movie um they're both adventurous they're both into fitness um they like kayak Hiking, hiking, you know, the, all the outdoorsy stuff. They're both into that. So that's good. So I have, you know, I feel a lot better now because I was really worried about Olivia. Now, Brett said that Olivia is his type. Now, I would have thought his type was, you know, uh, short, petite, blonde. You know, that's what I would have thought his type was. But he said this is a the type of woman that he normally goes after when he's at the bar. The kind of woman that he would approach um, that he's attracted to her and that you know this is his type and i'm glad because that's really good now moving on to woody and amani which to me they were the best of the night the best best wedding that i think i've ever seen on married at first sight so first of all woody looked handsome in his tuxedo he has his own style his own flair he looked really really handsome and I don't think his tuxedo was anything out of the ordinary. I think it was just a regular tuxedo, I think. Well, there's a white one. I think he wore a white tux. I don't remember. But Amani, wow, breathtaking. Her beautiful skin, that beautiful ebony skin against that white gown. Oh, my God. Absolutely beautiful. Um, her hair, her dress, her... I mean, everything about Amani was just spot on. And when she walked down the aisle and when she walked up up to oh walking down the aisle oh so let's talk about Imani and her two dads so there was a point before the wedding where she was having a conversation with both of her fathers her stepdad and her biological father they're both kind of giving her advice or whatever and I thought that was really nice that both men um are a part of, are a part of her life and a part of this whole wedding ceremony so they both got to walk her down the aisle which I thought was the sweetest thing um first her biological father walked her down halfway and then he passed her on to her stepfather and he walked her down the rest of the way and I thought that was just you know what can you say you know that's just like really good adult people knowing how to raise children together so I mean I thumbs up to her mom her dad, her stepdad, her bonus dad, they've done an awesome job in raising this young woman. And the fact that the two dads are friends and that they both are able to walk her down the aisle, I mean, just, what can you say? That's just absolutely perfect. So when they were exchanging um, their wedding vows, uh, Woody was being Woody, you know, he was funny. He was, you know, making everybody laugh, making her laugh, making her smile. And it seemed like she got his humor and um, he's just, you know, the life of the party. Someone who, you know, you think probably was the class clown. 
he just has an awesome personality. Now, last week, I really wasn't too keen on Woody. And I was being influenced by the friends that they had because Miles and Woody are friends. And when they announced to everybody that they were going to both be on Married at First Sight, um, everybody was like, Woody wasn't ready to get married. So I was kind of worried, you know, about this. But it seemed Amani won him over. It seemed like he is really smitten by this woman, that he is very much into her. The whole entire time, from the time that they met and for the rest of their segment I kind of got the feeling that he could not keep his hands off of her he could not keep his eyes off of her that he was really 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 happy with who he was matched with and that is good to know that's awesome so um they jumped the broom after they exchanged their vows they jumped the broom and you know incorporating an old african-american tradition into their wedding um he asked her as well can i kiss you she said yes but they kissed on the lips and when they did the one-on-one -on -one part after the ceremony when they were talking it seemed like you know now Many would say that the conversation flowed and I'm pretty and it did flow and you know But I kind of felt like there was a little bit of awkwardness there Which is expected because they don't know each other, but for the most part their conversation was good now I kind of felt like Imani was um, Sizing him up Woody made up his mind he likes her he wants her he's happy with her but i kind of felt like but imani did say that she found him attractive she thought that he was really cute she found him very attractive and how can you not <laughs> how can you not even if maybe physically woody isn't your type his personality is going to win you over so she did she did find him attractive there was chemistry there definitely there was chemistry there and when they were taking their photos together that's when they really showed that there was chemistry between them and at the reception when it was time to give the toast the one who gave the toast for Amani was her best friend and he gave a beautiful toast um what i liked about his toast and um Woody's cousin's toast is that they talked real natural like they were talking to that person they weren't reading now I'm not knocking people for reading their speeches because I would read my speech too because you know I have a fear of public speaking so I would definitely read my speech but it's nice when someone can take the mic and just talk and it just comes off so natural so Amani her best friend gave the toast to her and his words were you know really beautiful described her very eloquent elo eloquently and Woody his cousin Gerard gave the speech and they're very very close I mean his cousin they see I guess they see each other more like brothers than cousins um because he did refer to Woody as his brother and you can tell from the speech that his cousin Gerard looked up to him a lot and you kind of get an insight on the kind of person that Woody is and it made me think that Woody is someone who probably has a positive influence on a lot of young people and his family the kids that he teaches and coaches like he's a really good positive influence and a good positive leader for these people and so the speech that he gave was just beautiful and heartfelt and sincere and he cried while he was giving the speech because he got you know overtaken by emotion and then Woody cried and and I cried and I thought oh my god this is just too much but it was a really nice speech that he gave for uh, Woody's toast so when they danced um, Imani had mentioned that she liked how he danced and how they danced together you know that he didn't hold back he wasn't shy on the dance floor and they looked good I mean they looked so good I never would have thought I never would have put these people together if you had left it up to me there's no way i would have put these people together but i guess you know this situation so far it seems like you know the experts know what they were what they were doing so i'm keeping my fingers crossed as it works out <laughs> i really am keeping my fingers crossed because they look good together they seem to kind of you know just fit each other complement each other really well and there's this obvious chemistry between them now i take back what i said last week that amani needed to be with somebody older a little bit more reserved like her no she doesn't she needs a woody in her life someone who's fun and exciting and adventurous and someone who can bring out the silliness in her you know the girl the the girlish side of her and um so that was just yeah woody and imani uh they're good together two thumbs up two, th two thumbs way up for woody and imani absolutely love them 
Then we move on to our last couple of the evening. We still have one couple left that we're going to see next week, and we're going to see the rest of Amelia and Bennett next week as well. But we ended with Amelia and Bennett, and um, this was nice as well. I enjoyed Amelia and Bennett. I love Bennett. I love me some Bennett. I love Bennett. So um, Bennett can kind of do no wrong in my, in my eyes. So he... She's getting ready with her bridesmaids, and then he sends her a gift, which was a necklace with a pebble. And along with the necklace, he sends her a really beautiful, heartfelt note. Now, Bennett is a writer, so he has a way with words, and I thought that what he wrote was really beautiful. And I guess he, the note just kind of symbolized what this pebble meant, you know, because he found this pebble and, you know, the symbolic meaning of the pebble and what it meant to the two of them specifically. And it fit her attire really well because you know she's all she's kind of like a hippie all into nature and being natural and all of that so so um the the necklace fit her attire she did put on the necklace uh she had on a her veil was a bird's nest with a bird on it which you know i guess that was fun and that was so amelia um i didn't really care for her bridesmaid bridesmaids dresses i didn't understand because when they walked down the aisle they had veils on but whatever it worked and um so they she had three bridesmaids they walk they're walking down the aisle and the middle bridesmaid is on a unicycle and the other two are walking beside her i guess to help her balance she comes down the aisle in a unicycle first i thought it was amelia who was coming down the aisle in a unicycle from the previews i thought it was amelia this whole time i thought it was amelia who was walking Walking down the aisle in a unicycle or coming down the aisle in a unicycle and I kind of have a feeling that when Bennett saw the bridesmaids when the girl on the unicycle got off and went to go sit down where the bridesmaids were supposed to go sit down I think Bennett had a sigh of relief I think he thought that was Amelia on the unicycle and he was relieved to find that it wasn't so coming to find out as Amelia is walking down the aisle she actually knows Bennett she whispers to her mom that she had met him before so that's where the episode ended so it's going to be interesting to see how they've met I wonder if they've dated before or if they just met casually but we won't know that until next week so thank you for joining me and I hope you come back for my uh, upcoming review for the next episode of Married at First Sight, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.